Hi everybody, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. I've now been treating COVID-19 patients for the best part of two years. I've treated hundreds of patients with the illness and I've worked in four different hospitals. I actually cut back on a lot of my outpatient work to work in hospitals more, especially during COVID-19 surges. And I think I'm fairly well versed by now in how we've been treating COVID-19 in the hospital, what protocols we've been using, what we've been doing right, what we've been doing wrong. And I'd like to share with you some of my experiences, but particularly focus on one hidden risk factor that keeps coming up again and again with COVID-19 patients. Of course, I am only giving you my experiences as one doctor working in one part of the country. Other doctors may have different experiences, but this is what I'd like to share with you. The vast, vast majority of my patients hospitalized with COVID-19 have been older, over the age of 65, and that is reflected in statistics that we've been seeing from all over the world. Of the patients who I have seen who have been under the age of 60, nearly all of them, in fact, maybe even all of them, have had an underlying risk factor, whether that is an underlying medical condition, a reason for immune compromise, or having excess body fat, being overweight or obese, which we haven't been talking about anywhere nearly enough as we should be. That is a massive, massive risk factor for a more severe case of COVID-19. Routinely, when patients are admitted to hospital, every hospital will have its own protocol of how it manages COVID-19 with regards to many different things, including how it manages oxygen and also other medications. I've talked about dexamethasone before in my videos, and that is a steroid, and I really believe that was a game changer. As soon as we started using it in the spring, summer of 2020, many, many patients started doing a lot better, and it is a very simple, cheap medication. Of course, we use other medications in the hospital as well, and certain other things that we do on all of our patients include daily blood tests. We want to check their complete blood count, what their white count is doing, how their kidney function is faring, what their liver function is doing, and we also trend their inflammatory markers on blood tests. But two blood tests that I'm always curious to check in all of my patients, and I always make sure to add on, are vitamin D that I've talked about before in prior videos and will do again in the future, and HbA1c, which is the test that I would like to focus on in this video, HbA1c. A disproportionate amount of my patients have elevated HbA1c. What is HbA1c? Well, it is a marker of your blood glucose control over a sustained period of time. Whereas you can have other blood tests or even a finger stick check that will test your blood sugar at one point in time, an HbA1c measures your blood sugar over a two to three month period. So it's a much better measurement of your blood sugar control. And the measurements that we use in the United States are that an HbA1c less than 5.7 is normal, 5.7 to 6.4 is pre-diabetic, and greater than 6.5 is diabetic. And I can't tell you the number of patients whose HbA1c I have checked who have been admitted with COVID, and they have HbA1c in a pre-diabetic or even early diabetic range. And I will walk into their room and I will tell them and it will come as a complete surprise to them. I've seen it happen time and time again. When I do my medical notes, what I do for any condition, not just COVID-19, is that I always list the risk factors for any particular condition occurring. And what's ironic about the last couple of years is that some people have forgotten completely the importance of risk stratification. It's literally the first thing we learn in medical school. Every condition out there, or almost every condition, will come with a list of risk factors for getting that condition. And the amount of time that I have had to list elevated HbA1c, pre-diabetes, or even early diabetic in people's list of risk factors for getting severe case of COVID-19 and ending up in the hospital is nobody's business. So why is elevated HbA1c such a bad thing? Well, this is a great question. And what it goes to show is that even having a mildly elevated HbA1c running at a blood sugar, which is higher than it should be, is extremely detrimental for your body. And of course, when we get to the extremes, people with very bad uncontrolled diabetes, that takes things to a whole different level. But having a mildly elevated HbA1c in that 5.7 to 6.4 range is the start of that.
And what it is, is a reflection of your underlying metabolic and immune health. As soon as your metabolic health starts to decline, often your HbA1c will start creeping up. And a very common scenario that I saw many, many times, especially in my clinic, was that a patient would be in their 30s, 40s, or 50s, a normal everyday person. They would be very busy with work and with family, and their health would kind of fall off the wagon. And you probably know lots of people that this has happened to. Maybe it's happened to you. You're so busy, you forget to take care of your health. People start to put on weight, and what we see is their HbA1c starts creeping up. And the good news about this, the encouraging news, is that having an elevated HbA1c is something which is very reversible. When it starts to creep up, if you adopt the right lifestyle measures, you start taking care of your diet, you have a much healthier diet, you start to exercise, start taking care of other things in your life like stress management and better sleep, that HbA1c will start trending down. And it is great for me as a doctor when I see that happening in my patients. But this is a very important thing to remember. This is something which is in our control to a large extent. And so many millions and millions of people out there with pre-diabetes who don't even know it could easily reverse this. And what I'd like as the take home message of this video is that having a mildly elevated HbA1c is not just a risk factor for COVID-19, but also a risk factor for many other illnesses as well, because it's a direct reflection of your underlying metabolic and immune health. So I do hope that you have checked yours recently. And if it's slightly elevated, take good care of your health. It's something which you can easily reverse and far better to do so with lifestyle rather than needing medications. Thanks everyone for listening. Dr. Sunil Dan, Medstoic Lifestyle Medicine. You can also follow me on Locals.com. It is an uncensored platform. Link is down below. We'll speak again very soon.